Hi, this video is all about brainstorming and drafting your literacy narrative. As you've been reading these literacy narratives, you've noticed that these are not your typical essays. Um, this is an entirely different genre. Now you're familiar with the term genre and you probably think about music genres and you think about fiction genres. So a short story is not the same as a novel. Hip hop is not the same as marching band music. They have different characteristics. You would never confuse them. They're hip hop and marching band music, both examples of music, but nothing the same because they're constructed differently. They have different rhythms. In many cases, they have different audiences. So you are writing a personal essay, and that is entirely different than the typical five paragraph essay that you're used to. And so you have to approach it differently. And I wanna talk about that in this video. Now, um, this genre is considered a personal essay, a literacy narrative. It's considered creative nonfiction, which means that you're writing it like a story. It's true, but you are creating it like a story. This makes it way more interesting to read than if you were doing the typical five paragraph essay. Um, it may be challenging to write because it's so different, but it will be an exercise and you will have a group that will read what you're writing and give you support and give you suggestions. And I will read a draft of your essay also. So let's get started. Now, you've read Callie Linfor's Joyous Survival. Um, last year, Callie came into my classroom and she presented the material that I'm gonna present to you today. Um, she's not available right now, otherwise she would have been happy to be here. Instead, I'm going to present her slideshow and give you commentary that she might not be able to do. So, she started out with a question. Let's call it an inquiry question. She was asking, what does literacy mean to me? What is the role of literacy in my life? And so she had this question, but she didn't want to just get an answer, a quick answer, because quick answers are often boring. And so she brainstormed, she asked, she asked deeply, and then she asked again, and she asked a series of questions until her literacy question morphed into, how has literacy meant survival in my life? So she started out with a standard question, but through the process of asking questions, she ended up with what you actually read. In the same way, you are starting out with an inquiry question. What does literacy mean to you? What is the role of literacy in your life? And in the same way, don't take the easy answer. Ask questions, go deeper, ask more questions. That is a dog. So let's... Well, that was fun. I have four dogs today. Um, anyways, start with a question, but don't start your essay knowing exactly what you're gonna say. Joan Didion, who writes a lot of personal essays, says she writes entirely to find out what she's thinking, what she's looking at, what she sees and what it means. That's what you're doing here. That's what made all of those essays that you read interesting. They were not, when you were reading them, they weren't the expected ideas. And they engaged you. They made you want to keep reading. So this is the process that Kelly went through to write this essay. And you'll notice that there are little boxes everywhere on the page. Because writing this essay isn't as linear as writing a five paragraph essay with a five paragraph essay, most of the time you know exactly what you're thinking. You write the thesis, you create an outline, and yeah, that's how you do it. This is different. 
start with a question. And then you might research some details. You seek to answer it by thinking in images. Um, you jot down details of settings, where you are in those images. You describe people, places, things. You explain thought processes. You discuss internal and external realities. You take those people that you thought of and you turn them into characters so that we know them. You allow new questions and ideas to arise, and you understand that who you are matters in that story, and your audience, you can't assume that they know who you are, so you have to give them details about yourself, and you have to occupy an identity based on the way you write. You counter audience assumptions. You figure out what they're thinking, and you urge them to think in a new way. You surprise. Now, let's walk through all of that with Callie's essay. So her inquiry question is, what does literacy mean to me? And she began to answer it. Well, literacy means reading. Literacy means access to information. Literacy means a knowledge of a world beyond myself. Those are the standard answers. They're good answers. Literacy has always meant those things to me. Um, but they mean those things to everybody. And so if you stop there, your essay won't go anyplace exciting. So, so she asked more, she asked a little more deeply, what does literacy mean to me? It means the power to control ideas, to write, which now we're getting a little interesting. Um, it means learning. It means listening. Okay. Let's go deeper, she said. What does literacy mean to me? It means watching. It means storytelling. It means surrendering and recovering. Now we're getting somewhere. So, She's got these ideas going around in her head, and she wants to ask questions about the answers. Like, when did my literacy form? Um, Kelly has dyslexia, which you might not have known. She's a wonderful writer. She's a poet. She's an extraordinary teacher. And um, she has dyslexia, which meant that she didn't learn to read for a long time, which is why she was struggling in school. Um, so she asked, when did my literacy form? What did I read? What stories was I told? What did I watch and what did I listen to? Um, she started reading and she could barely write until the third grade because of dyslexia. Then she learned to memorize words as pictures. What did she read? She read books about Island, you know, like survival, really. Um, Swiss Family Robinson, Hatchet, Baby Island, Island of the Blue Dolphins. And so now she circles back and she has new questions. What do these books have in common? Well, feral children, survival stories, independence, agency. And she also read books like these, um, Wilderness Living and Survival Skills, Edible Wild Plants, and when she read, she tried things out. So she actually ate roses. And she asked herself, why was I so fascinated with these themes? Because that's what she was reading. You saw that in her story. And that's when she asked, what stories was I told? So she's circling back. So she was told stories um, on television. The Muppet Show, Charlie's Angels, What's Happening. Um, her grandmother and her mother told her stories. Her grandmother told her stories about leaving Oklahoma and riding the rails um, as a stowaway um, to get to California during the Great Depression. Um, yes, um, that's when um, her mother was uh, raped. Her grandmother was raped. 
Um, her mother told her stories about being a hippie, about working in a guitar factory, um, and about domestic violence. So Callie's watching the normal little kid stuff on television, but she's also hearing these stories that are deep stories. And she asked, why was I so fascinated with these themes, these stories of survival? And so she's off, she's circling back, survival, survival. Survival was in all of these stories that she was told. And so her new literacy question, her new answer to the literacy question is, what does literacy mean to me? It means survival. So she could start thinking about that. So reading, writing, agency, the storytelling gave her strategies for surviving. It gave her the hope that she could survive. Now, she could tell you that, but it's important in creative nonfiction that authors show and so she thought about the settings that mattered to her literacy, her classroom, um, the library that actually is a building in Riverside where Kelly is from, her living room where there was a television and a stereo. These were settings that mattered. Who mattered to my literacy? And so she thought about characters, she could weave in her mom, her grandmother, her school librarian, the city librarian, her first college writing teacher. All of these people mattered to her literacy. They told her stories, they pointed her in directions. Um, and as she went through that, she remembered that her first college writing teacher was the last victim of the Hillside Strangler. Up until that point, Callie had not thought about weaving the Hillside Strangler into her story. I want to emphasize this. The story that you read, you read, was not the story Callie envisioned when she started out. But when she remembered that the writing teacher was the last victim of the Hillside Strangler, she also remembered hearing about the Hillside Strangler on television when she was a very little girl. And so that created a tone, an ominous tone, a tone of risk, perpetual risk, and ultimate survival. Um, I could have put that on, I could have said that on that slide. Um, I did not pay, create this PowerPoint. I just modified it. So she's got this idea. She's got all of these ideas and she has to remember who am I writing this essay to? Because this matters. Now your audience is going to be other first year students in this classroom and across SDSU. And so you have to think, what do I know about this audience? They're not all the same, any more than San Diego County writing teachers are all the same. And yet they do have some common characteristics and you're gonna need to think through what they believe on the topics that you'll be writing about. So she had to answer, what does my audience think and believe about literacy? Well, like many of you, her audience believed literacy is the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate, and compute using printed and written materials. She wants to challenge that point of view. And she has to think about how what she believes, what she thinks is different than what her audience thinks. Because if she just repeats what they say, there really is no point in her saying it. And so what she thinks is that literacy is survival and all literacies count. 
And so she's got to tell a story that persuades her readers that literacy is survival and all literacies count. Now I want to note that it's, and it's important to recognize that she doesn't come in and yell at them and tell them they're wrong. No, she engages them so that they can see the role of literacy in her life. They can see where she started and they can see where she ended up. She can see, they can see that she's a credible writer, a credible poet, a credible teacher who cares about students and who literacy literally was survival in her life. And by showing them her life as an example, she hopes she can persuade them. Now, I can tell you, I don't know about all of the people who have read this over the years, but I can tell you that her essay transformed the way I teach. And um, that's how you ended up with me, who I am right now. So um, let's talk about Callie's identity, because as you read her, you began to feel like you knew her. And so she had to think about all the parts of her identity because she needed to weave them into this story. She's female. She struggles with reading. She's poor. Um, she's a poet. She's a teacher. Um, these parts of her identity matter most to her audience. So she weaves in the parts that matter most to her and to her story, and she weaves in the parts of her identity that are going to connect with her audience. And that's really important because she's got to establish credibility. And you remember the five things that Aristotle said establish credibility, knowledgeability, shared values and experiences. She's um, concerned for the audience, fairness, objectivity, and goodness. And she weaves in most of those. Now, if you go back to this process, you can see that she's doing all of these things. Now it's going in a lot of different directions and that's gonna make you feel out of control. And that's gonna make this tough, which is why I recommend getting started over the weekend. Um, that's most of what we'll be doing next week is drafting. Your first draft is due on Wednesday and then you'll start the peer reading process um, with your group and you will do first draft that you present to them, a second draft that you present to them, and then a final draft which we will gather together. Um, we'll be talking about how to divide up the book that we'll put, write together, you know, like what chapters we need, what title we'll want, but right now you just want to focus on your story. Now, I mentioned the possibility of incorporating evidence. You don't see any evidence in Callie's story because it's woven in. But remember, she's five years old when she first heard about the Hillside Strangler. She's 10 when the Hillside Strangler was convicted. And um, I don't know about you, well, you're younger than me, but I don't remember all the things from when I was five or when I was 10. I certainly don't remember what I saw on the news, specifically with details. In order to get the details right about the Hillside Strangler, she had to do some research. And it's woven in to the story because when she gets the details right, she's a lot more credible. She seems a lot more knowledgeable. Um, she had to make sure she had all the titles of those books correct. Um, she had to do some research on the victims of the Hillside Strangler, what reporters said. Um, all of those things are embedded in her story. And you may need to do that too. Um, it's possible that as Koenig did or Wynn did um, or um, Harris, or McBride, and I can't remember who else I put on your list, but they did research. Um, I, Harriet Johnson actually cites Peter Singer. Um, Koenig cites um, the chief who was at Standing Rock. Um, 
Wynne has lists of books and records arguments about the canon. And so it's possible for you to develop your literacy narrative that you would actually need to cite people. But again, you're making it a story. You don't start with the research and then come to a conclusion. You're gonna tap into your life because stories really are how we communicate and how we connect with other people. So that's all I've got. And I can't wait to see what you are working on. Thanks, bye.